Welcome to the channel. This is Go Greddy and welcome to the 2021 Manufacturers Exhibition Season. Round number two at Dragon Trail Seaside. We're in the group four cars this evening. And we're going to send it around here and hope to survive the chicane of death. The infamous chicane. That's right. And uh, right now you're riding along with me on my qualifying lap as I do a horrible job on turn one. Go too wide. Ah, poor DNA V-Vice behind me. He's probably cursing me. All I wanted to do was stay in Dark Fox's slipstream. And let him tug me along for a great qualifying time. But I just wasn't having any of that. And then I was turning a little bit late there on the chicane. Had to lift a little bit. Not what I wanted for my qualifying lap. So we're going to have to hopefully stay out again. And again, break too late there for the first corner again and so i'm going through there slow and again dna <laughs> vivi sketches me and uh, i'm feeling a little bit bad because i'm not usually this slow around the track i'm sitting on a 146 977 not a good time for me uh, at all and then uh, dna gets in the back bumper of me i don't think it would have mattered i mean i may have gotten a tenth or two better but uh it wasn't a very good lap so no worries he apologized in the lobby um but we ended up starting in P12, and that is not where you want to start at Dragon Trail Seaside because I got to tell you, folks around this track tend to get the elbows out, and get a little, uh, get a little pushy, a little argy bargy out there. You know, everyone's trying to get those positions, and 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 I learned from last race, hopefully, and. Um, I know I have cold tires, so I break early for a change, hoping everyone's going to murder each of <laughs> each other in turn one. But nothing, I mean, literally, nothing happens. That is just bizarre beyond bizarre. I've never been through Dragon Trail, Seaside, and everyone get through turn one without a problem. But I didn't, I didn't see any death or carnage, so it looked like everyone navigated the first turn without too much trouble, so great job there by the entire pack. But... Lap one, always exciting at Dragon Trail because, you know, folks are feeling each other out. Uh, you can see a little see money getting there in the dirt a little bit. Loses just a little bit of time to the NSX. And then, you know, you're thinking, well, is the NSX going to go for it right here? They can go side by side into corner one. And then what do you do when they go side by side in corner one? You just take it easy, chill out a little bit. As you can see, it's a little see money guarding that inside line. Causes the NSX to break a little bit early. Now I'm looking in my rearview mirror and thinking, what's going to happen behind me? A little C money goes wide, so I'm just going to follow the NSX through here. And I see a little gap there between the two, and I'm hoping I'm going to fit in there. And luckily for me, a little C backs out of it because I was going to have to try and figure out how to navigate the chicane of death two by two or one by one or whatever you call that, side by side, I guess is what it would be. And on exit, the Honda taps the wall a little bit, but I get into the back of them, so slows down my exit. I probably could have got a pass right there and been heading towards P9, which actually would have been nice. But uh, as we navigate the final corner, I am in P11, so picked up one position so far in the race. So I'm like, okay, you know, keep the head down, you know, try and keep the nose clean, and maybe you'll pick up a few more. And then I tap the NSX going into corner one, so bad gruddy there and you know i'm not gonna pass him here i'm gonna let off a little bit i forced him wide and then i get really loose right here and have a uh, brown shorts moment as you can see <laughs> i get nearly sideways somehow managed to gather it back up and slip in here behind but uh, behind peak 405 as he makes the pass after my mistake so on to lap two near the end here peak 405 makes the move down on the inside of samuel uh, in the NSX, and we have a uh, Afro Power goes wide there, gets off track, so I pick up a Greddy Pass right there, so I move from P12 back to P11. Now I'm going to go down the inside of the NSX. I'm going to see uh, if I can't scare these guys into doing something and uh, get them to break late, anything, and I don't, but I do manage to hit the NSX from behind again. So another bad Greddy there, but once again, I let off, make sure he, he took the corner, and then this Corvette appears in front of me uh, out of ghosting and I hit him from behind and that allows um, V-Vice to get the inside. Now he's trying to give me room there as we will see soon here in the replay, but he is unable to do so. Taps me, knocks me off into the gravel. So I go into the sand, the sand pit there and start making sand castles. You can see uh, he makes up ground rather quickly on me after I hit the Chevy. Now hitting that curb just gets a little loose and just taps me just enough to knock me off. 
into the sand trap. So nothing dirty, um, but uh, did not help my position at all. Now I am in P16. So gone from P12, dropped four spots to P16, and I have now the black Mazda on my rear, and he makes a very nice outside in pass. It's a little bit of me on on the um, as he comes through on the inside, but again, you know, nothing terrible. It wasn't super dirty or anything, uh, but he did get a bit of me as he as he made that pass. But fortunately for him, he is not able to hold it coming out of the other side of the chicane of death. So Greddy takes his spot right back again, talking about myself in the third person. Super cool. You should try it at home sometime. Make the pass, get down into the final right-hander and take it. Actually, a pretty bad final turn there. He probably would have made the outside in on me again if he hadn't hit me from behind there. So here we are on lap four. Uh, I am in P15. I'm moving up now to P14 as I pass a little C money on the outside. And I'm just going to think, I'm just going to slip in here behind DNA V-Vice. But then as I'm getting on the brakes, I is the Mazda coming down on the inside of me. And then little C Money comes down on the inside of him. So v is losing three positions in that exchange. I, I lost two. So the two in front not doing a very good job of keeping the two behind behind him. Uh, and as we come out of the chicane, Mazda gets into the wall yet again. But, of course, I was right there to give him a nice little bump forward. And v picks up a position back yet again. So... NP16, lap number four, and I'm shaking my head because it just does not seem like I can catch a break this race. Everywhere I turn around, I'm bumping someone from behind or making a mistake or someone in front of me is making a mistake. It's just air on top of air, just compounding, just terrible. So Corvette goes off track, goes wide there, going back. Let's see what happened to him. He uh, he gets a little tap on the inside there from Afro Power, but then Afro Power cleans up. <laughs> Horses off track, and then the Black Mazda takes him even further off track. And then he just commits Harry Kishna into, is it Harry Kishna, Harry Kara, Harry something? I don't remember. Uh, goes right into the wall there. Uh, now on lap six, we have a gentleman goes wide and gets squeezed into the wall by DNA and Lil C Money. And uh, just gets kind of sucked backwards into to Nowhereville. So as we come out of the chicane here on lap six, six, halfway through the race, looking good. No pit stops to worry about in this race. No fuel to worry about. It is basically a 12-lap sprint race. So moving on here to lap seven, as you can see, we're going through the chicane. DNA scratches the side of the wall there just a little bit. And the NSX eats the wall on the exit. And that allows for another Gretty pass. So moving up to P11 from P12. Again, the chicane of death wreaking havoc this race just absolutely eating folks up as dna v vice gets drifty coming through and hits his left rear quarter panel on that guardrail allowing me to pick up enough speed to get by him get on the brakes here heading into the final right hander gonna put my eyes on applied ass apply ass oh my goodness i'm just totally butchering this dude's name the um the Peugeot in front there, the RCZ. Set my sights towards him. Come out of the, the uh, first set of turns, and he goes wide. Now, so I'm able to get a good run on him, pass him, and I'm thinking I got enough gap to get in front of him. Just barely don't, and I tap him. Then DNA taps the side of him, and then he gets in the back of me and decides, well, he's just not going to let up at all. He's just going to just push me off the track there. And quite honestly, uh, that, really, that really angered me. I was like, okay. I mean, I get it. Everyone makes a little mistake here or there, runs into a person. You know, it, it happens. You know, we're all racing. We're all trying to have a good time. But when you get into the guy's quarter panel, you just keep on the gas. Just keep driving him off the track. That that's, that really bothers me. So, needless to say, if the opportunity presented itself, I probably wasn't going to be too concerned if contact was made when I took back that position in the future. So, heading here through the chicane of death, he goes wide, hits the wall. DNA V-Vice has a good run on him. Um, and I also have a good run as we're heading down towards the right-hander. I go down the inside here and get on the break. And the break is on. He makes this quick move in front of me. Really kind of messed up my entry in the corner. Get into V-Vice. And, and I was like, you know what? Uh, just take a little break in the grass there. So, yep, yeah, I did it. Uh, I admit it. And I was wrong. But it happened. So, i show you the good with the bad. So, heading to Chicane Death again. Looking at V-Vice as we're heading through the COD. 
and the invisible wall monster grabbed his car and just stopped it on a dime. I mean, stopped him so hard. I mean, he just sucked the DNA right out of him. So I, he's probably not even DNA V Vice anymore. He's probably just V Vice because, you know, just all the DNA just gone. <laughs> uh, so on to the last lap. Uh, no, no more pressure really after that. And uh, finished there in P9. And I was like, man, I know I've got much more pace than this. I know I can do better than this. So, of course, i got to go again. So that's what we do. So jump into this lobby again. Quite a few familiar names. Uh, a few really fast guys in here. So I was looking forward to the race. And I crossed the line in my first uh, qualifying lap with a 146.617. Now, in the previous race, this would probably be good for about a P5 or so. So I was like, all right. So I'm, I'm feeling pretty good. Not my best ever qualifying time, but at this track but you know i was pretty happy with that so put the head down i'm like all right let's see if i uh can catch the guy in front of me here and, and, and just maybe improve upon my time so get on the brakes into this right hander get onto the apex get back on the gas quickly coming up the hill shifting to third looking good at this point in the track as i cross the first sector line i am 0.222 seconds ahead of my previous time. I'm like, well, that's pretty good because, you know, I had a 617 before. So that puts me into the high threes. If I can just hold on to the rest of this lap, I was a little bit behind on my corners here, and I was really unhappy with myself for getting, you know, what we call behind the cones uh, in autocross. But this will be behind the apexes here at, at this track. So get on the brakes there uh, just as the curbing starts. And I miss my apex right there. I'm like, ah, oh, Greddy. Ready? What are you doing? You're throwing it away. So as I come through this next sector, it's a point two two zero. So I only lost two thousands over my previous sector time. So it's not terrible. I wanted to take the chicane flat here, but I had to lift a little bit. But I think if I had just stayed in it, I would have taken it. But I got all chickeny because I knew it was a decent lap time. So I wanted to make sure I made it through clean. So I did have the little lift there. But after I looked back, I was like, Oh man, if you just kept it planted, I think you'd have had it. But uh, I didn't. I chickened out. Come around the final turn, felt good about the last turn there. I uh, tucked it in nicely and got on the power nice and early. Cut the last corner there. Head down towards the finish line. And I cross the line, no slipstream. 146, 289. Very pleased with that. And that was good for P4. So starting the race, I'm behind J2K in the Ferrari. Got another Ferrari behind me in Jeeves 2. So it's a Ferrari sandwich with Grady in the middle. Into corner one. First lap of the race, I break nice and early, and then J2K goes off track, comes back on, gets in my way. I hit him from behind, causes my back end to get squirrely, which allows Jeeves to make the pass. So right off the bat, we lose, lose the, pit, uh, the slip stream to P2, and I lose a position. So drop back a position, and we lose the slip stream to the two drivers ahead. So not a good start to this race at all as I drop from P4 to P5. But... It is the first lap, and anything can happen, and I'm trying to decide which Ferrari I want to follow here. I back it off just a little bit to let Jeeves slip back in, because what I really don't want to happen is these crazies behind me, this, this swarm of dudes that are back there <laughs> ready to pounce to catch us. So while they're racing, I, I don't want to interject myself too much just yet and, and slow us down to the point where all these guys are now you know, jumping into the race. So as you can see, I mean, they're catching up to us as it is, but they're also racing a little bit. So, um, you know, they're only about, about three tenths behind us. And uh, I don't want them to get much closer. Heading into the chicane of death, and Jeeves finds the wall. <laughs> Let's slow it down. It looks like he's going to clear it just barely, but uh, the invisible wall monster grabs his car, <laughs> yanks it back. He's hanging out with DNA, V Vice's DNA back there. And then I get a great run on J2K coming around the last corner. He squeezes me out to the outside. If I knew he was going to squeeze me that far, I just went around to the left side. So I don't do a really good job of breaking there. And I'm waiting. I'm very narrow, which allows for the Lexus and the McLaren to make a run on me. So the mistake of Jeeves allowed me to pick up my position back. But. The mistake of J2K actually cost me two more positions. So J2K has cost me three positions so far this race and the slipstream to first and second place. So he is struggling and I am struggling behind him. I get a decent run around the outside of the McLaren here, exiting the chicane of death. Yet again, I don't know, this Aston Martin was really stable through that chicane. I really liked it through there. 
But man, that McLaren is so fast in that top gear and unable to really get a run on him, but I have a very nice exit. And now as we come out, it's going to be a battle for the slipstream. I'm trying to squeeze him a little bit to the right. He's trying, I mean, left, he's trying to push me a little bit to the right as we both fight for the slipstream. Unfortunately, with, his, with the line, he got a little more of the slipstream and he was able to pull out in front of me. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to break just a hair early, let him kind of slide in front because again, I'm not going to make that pass. So there's no point in really fighting for because all it's going to do is lose both times. So I, I pull back a little bit there, let him slide in front of me. And uh, I'm, I'm going to save it for another day. I mean, we've got eight more laps. Uh, we're all right here. We've already lost P1 and P2. They're gone. So uh, here the Lexus goes wide through the right-hander. I'm able to pick up a Gretty pass, move back in to P5. So, hey, one more position, and I didn't have to do any work to get it. I like it. So now I need to put my head down and concentrate on catching the McLaren and the Ferrari in front of me, which will not be an easy task because both of them are pretty quick. And it seems like J2K is finally starting to calm down a little bit. Not only that, but now I've got pressure from behind on this 650S that's behind me, this McLaren. So as I head down into this braking zone, you can see how close he is now within three tenths. And again, that McLaren is, I mean, it scoots in that top gear. So as we come down the straight, you can see he's putting a move down the inside. I mean, not many cars are past the Aston on the straight, but that 650S was really, really catching me right through there. But he backs out of it just a little bit like I did uh, before because he's also got to worry about that Lexus that's behind him. He doesn't want to allow him to get past as well. So that I think that kind of helped me out through there. So I was able to hold that position. And into the chicane of death yet again. And yet another competitor struggles as he comes through, which gives me a little bit of a run on him as I come down the inside of J2K on lap number nine. Can I make it stick this time, however? Because last time I failed miserably. Much better job on the brakes and the turning. Get on the gas very nicely. Power out, but go just a little bit wide on the curbs there. And it just slows me down just enough that I don't get a nice exit to where I can pull away from that Ferrari. But doesn't look like he's super interested in making the pass. He's not going to tuck it down to the inside just yet. He's going to look around the outside, but I know if he sends it here, I'm going to be on the inside for the next few corners. He does not. So I'm able to get a relatively nice exit coming through there. Get on the gas nice and early. That's what you want to do on that second part of that chicane is get on the gas nice and early. So heading down to the right-hander before the chicane of death. And, man, he really sends it from three-tenths back. Does J2K gets in the back of me, kind of pushes me deep and wide and comes around on the inside. But I have the out, I have the outside, which will turn into the inside line, going to the chicane of death. Etiquette says you should back out. He backs out, but just catches my back bumper as we go through over that curb and he gets the wall and slides back a good bit, which puts P6 and P7 on his tail as we head down to the final turn of the lap on lap 10. J2K now with two cars putting pressure on him, so that's just going to allow me to scamper off. Not enough time to catch P3 and P2, so I come across here on the final lap with a P4. And I'll take that. 196 points, so got a good, nice DR boost. Really pleased with that performance, more so than the last race. Hope you enjoyed it as well. If you did, hit the like, hit the subscribe, come back, check out some more videos. I'd greatly appreciate it. So for myself, Go, Greddy. Y'all have a great evening. DJ Clean, take us out of here.